Welcome to PTN This Week. I'm your host, Art Edgerton. On this week's edition, we will be covering the Selectman's Meeting, where a controversial revenue source was discussed. And Arthur Boyle makes a special announcement. We have an interview with outgoing Fire Chief Mike Hill. We visited South Shore Children's Museum for story time. Our Excellence in Education segment will cover students on the honor roll and those who have excelled in art and music. Now, let's get to the news. The Pembroke Chamber of Commerce held its monthly after hours last week at Protector Wire Fire Systems. Andrew Sullivan, the company's CEO and board chairman, is also chairman of the town's community center task force. So he used the opportunity to show off the latest set of plans for the construction of the proposed facility. Our committee has been meeting for about two years now. Um, you know, we studied all the past notes from past committees and um, we were able at last town meeting to get um, $75,000 approved for an architectural study. So we found the experts in the game. Bargman, Henry, and Archetype, BH and A, have done about 22 community centers throughout Massachusetts. Marshfield Boys and Girls Club, which is represented here tonight, over there, and uh, Duxbury Council on Aging, big community center over in Randolph, you know, really progressive community centers that are designed for today's needs, today's seniors and young alike. So, you know, it was great for our committee of volunteers to have funding from the town to bring in this firm to really educate us on how you do a new council on aging today, how, you know, Pembroke, how recreation departments are working in today's day and age. They really studied the town throughout. We did some surveys and gathered all the facts, and they have this 96-page report that just landed, I would say, I would say, this ye yesterday is probably the uh, first Pembroke site feasibility. So here it is. Here's the plan. This is uh, the whole enchilada right here from our committee with their help. And, you know, we've bits and pieces of this have been, out, been uh, available for the public to see. But at this point, our committee has finished our study work as dictated by the selectmen, and we look forward to turning back over to selectmen and uh, sharing our final findings in this phase one study. These plans have been delivered to the Board of Selectmen and are available at the town's website. The selectmen had a busy night last Tuesday going through proposed articles for the upcoming town meeting, hearing the town manager's proposed budget for the fiscal year 2021, and selectman Trabuco brought up the idea once again of discussing cannabis dispensaries in Pembroke. I've been contacted by, uh, by someone who, who owns a marijuana facility. This town, this, this town has voted, I think, three separate times no against marijuana facilities in town. Uh, but having heard that budget information, I thought tonight would be a, a, an appropriate time to float the idea once again uh, to this board first so that we can um, have conversations throughout the community. Um, I was against the, the pot shops at first. Um, I, I felt like they were, uh, you know, deciding to deal with the devil in, in, in one way, to put it bluntly. But I think it's worth uh, having the discussion once again. It's been probably four years since the last time uh, we discussed it and voted on it. I got some information from this, uh, this one um, uh, pot shop Company. He's a firm. He owns uh, several pod shops around, and then there are many firms. But this one particular person happened to reach out to me, and uh, a town our size and our location, uh, being not quite rural but not quite city, he would anticipate uh, a, in the order of like six hundred thousand dollars a year for the town of Pembroke in income. So I thought it was worthy to have this discussion brought up. In the light of retail pot stores opening in surrounding towns, Jabruco thinks that our town might want to reconsider this as a revenue stream. Board Chairman Willard Bolter has strong feelings about marijuana, and he wants to keep the dispensaries out of Pembroke. My initial thoughts is, well, I'm going to stick with what I have because I had years uh, of working in law enforcement and dealing with people that were affected by uh, smoking marijuana. And uh, I just think it leads to other drugs and a 
it leads to bad behavior. It's it's hard to uh, manage it, and uh, I just don't, don't think that Pepperell, my hometown, would benefit by selling drugs or letting somebody sell drugs um, to people out on the street um, and having them get high and get traffic accidents and uh, all kinds of problems that are derived from. And that doesn't mean that somebody from Pembroke can't go to Hanover or Nashville or someplace else and get their stuff and bring it back to Pembroke. Um, I just have a long history of it and I've seen all the problems that it arises from it. And I just don't think it belongs in Pembroke. Not with my kids, not with my grandchildren. Uh, I would just be 100% against it. And that's my stance. At the same meeting, Selectman Osler Boyle announced that after serving on the board for 18 years, he would not seek re-election. Um, I want to thank all these people that have been so nice for the last couple of weeks in asking about whether I'm going to run again and uh, wishing me well if I did. But I promised Helen uh, several terms ago that the next one was my last term, and that was about three terms ago. And I, I'm not going to be running for a seventh term. Uh, I appreciate the support I've gotten from the people in town. Um, we've done some great things in Pembroke in the time that I've been on the uh, board. And uh, prior to that being the school committee, um, we have our own school system, and I'd like to think I was a part of that. Um, I served with four police chiefs, three school superintendents, two fire chiefs, and almost the third one was for a month or so. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, Ed and Sabrina have been just terrific to work with. And um, I served with 14 other selectmen. And, uh, they're uh, people by this group that um, I served with tonight. And uh, Josh was nice enough to he called me about uh, whether I was running or not, but he gave me a lapel pin from the state house that I'll uh, be sure to wear. And uh, it's, of course, it was big and he saw it on television. He wouldn't think they uh, call it too well for work. Um, I can start naming a lot of names of people who have done you know, great things for the, uh, for the town in the time that I've been here, but you always miss somebody. Uh, I do want to acknowledge Josh, who is here, uh, because we started out as political uh, allies and became friends, and uh, it's, it's very nice to have somebody like that around you call when you, uh, you know, got a hot item at the state house, and we've been through several of those. Dan, yeah, I think the beer looks great. You <laughs> <laughs> said that about mine. Sure. It's been <laughs> complex. I think my vote is in and... Um, Helen deserves a break after 43 years of marriage. It'll be 43 years tomorrow. So you can congratulate her and not me. Mm -hmm. I'm the one that got the better of that deal. But it's been uh, 36 years of public office, including uh, some time involved in my original hometown, 25 or 26 years here. And, um, you know, I, I enjoyed it virtually every minute of it. I've made 2,000 somewhat votes in the time that I've been here. And I can't imagine that they were all right. I'd like to think they were. But um, uh, it's something I encourage everybody to do at least once in your life is run for public office and sit on a local board and see how the money's spent and how it's raised. And you'll, um, you'll have a different view of what goes on. The, uh, people inside of this building and some of the greatest people you'll meet in the course of your day. And they, um, they work very hard for the public and uh, I'm proud to be a part of it. And uh, I'll have about five more meetings and then I'll be able to sit out there and start yelling at you guys and tell you what to do wrong. But again, I thank you and I thank Bill for, he's one of the chiefs I served on the yeah. That's true. He used to chase me off the beach of the same time. But the um, the PWA and the Silver Lake Ad Hoc Committee were two of the committees I served on and um, both were successful for their mission. So I'm very proud of that fact as well. And uh, um, I won't take up any more of your time. No, that's fine. I'm just I'm <laughs> Another familiar face in town is getting ready to step down, 
Fire Chief Mike Hill has announced that he will be retiring in June. PTN stopped into Pembroke Fire Department headquarters and spoke with the chief about his career and his plans for the future. Well, I probably owe my career to my, my father and my grandfather and, uh, and my Uncle Tom. Um, 1942, my grandfather started uh, with Company 2, and then subsequently my, uh, my dad and my, uh, my uncle followed, and I followed suit in, in 1984. So, yeah, since 1942, somebody from our family has been a member of the Pembroke Fire Department. So oh, that's pretty cool. They, they, they gave me my passion, I guess, you know, the fire in the belly so to speak. Um, so yeah, that's where I started my career down on High Street at, at Company 2. And then in 1984 and then in 87 I became a, a career firefighter. Wow. Do you have a son that's going to be a firefighter? I do have a son who is a firefighter actually. Oh, really? he's, uh, he's on the job over in Kingston right now. Wow. Been over there for almost two years now. Coming up on two years in July. That's cool. So, yeah. And he, he was, and he was a call firefighter here first, and then... Does he have a son, too? No, he's too young. Okay. <laughs> Thank God. Not to, No grandfather stuff yet. Okay. Maybe in a few years. On Friday morning, Pembroke Chamber President and PTN's own Kyle Harney sat down and shared the wisdom of Dr. Seuss with a few of the kids enjoying the South Shore Children's Museum at the Kingston Collection. But them Sam, you see, not in a house, not in a box, not with a mouse, not with a fox. I will not eat them here or there. I do not like them anywhere. That's all the time we have for this week. But if you have an idea for a story, you can let us know at newsdesk at pembroketownnews.com. Remember, when you need a window replaced or repaired, call our friends at Tiny and Sons Autoglass. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next week.